think I want to see this get on up is up there. That's the James Brown thing. Yeah, I want to see it. It's getting I think good instead reviews. of watching it, I should just go back and watch James Brown fucking videos. And also up there is Finding Fela, which I saw the uh, Broadway musical Me too. of Fela. Did and you guys go together? <laughs> no. no. Uh, Seems like you did. <laughs> and that, Seems like there's an affair I don't know about. <laughs> Hold on, I'm texting HR right now. Oh, Jesus Christ, don't. It's not even a fucking joke. Hey, HR. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just giving him a hashtag creep producer. <laughs> You gotta remember, her little body is not ready for that. Look, I'm a. She's I'm, saving it. I'm a responsible mentor. There's nothing weird going on. Do you feel like this is a safe zone for you? Absolutely. I know you're safe around Shelby. <laughs> I feel very safe around yeah, Shelby. Yeah, you could take your clothes off and lay on his lap and nothing <laughs> would happen. As you, long as you don't have a penis. You could beat the shit out of him in a bare buckle knock boxing match. A bare buckle? <laughs> bare knuckle. Knuckle is what buckle, I meant. Bare buckle, buckle Knuckle. Knuckle. <laughs> I'm not a fish. I'm a human. <laughs> He's right. You're stupid, though. I'm you very smart. Bare buckle. Like I'm very idiot. smart. I saw I what tripped over a word. people say bare buckle? Einstein? And smart people trip over the words all the time. There's a bare buckle. Bare I meant <laughs> something else. Bare anyway, I invented a nuclear bomb. <laughs> People are just yelling, he said bear buckle! <laughs> no. Relativity. Concentrate on the fucking science. So you both saw the play. Yep. And now this is a documentary about the play? About the play and just Fela himself. He's got such a Africa. cool story. He's, yeah, he's really cool. It's by Alex Gibney, the documentary director. Mm, yeah, he's been in here a couple of times. He makes great films. Yeah. How many big J's is it getting? <laughs> <laughs> These are literally old-fashioned joints, <laughs> like with fucking pink wrapping paper from the 70s. Now look, make fun of me. I said wrapping paper instead of rolling paper. Like a dick. <laughs> it happens. Adam, Boston, you're on the Run and Fez show. Hey, uh, Chris, I got a question for you. Sure. What is, uh, what's a... Bear buckle. Bear buckle. Bear knuckle. Bear buckle. Bear buckle. Bear buckle. You all know what I meant. Bear buckle. I picture a bear like without pants, but he still has a buckle on, and he's all proud of it. He Only even be you can one. prevent forest fires. Look at and you'll get this bear buckle if you <laughs> write in now. Check my buckle out, guys. Look at it. This is embarrassing. I can't believe I. Has anyone? Up. I mean, I, you brought up that bears don't wear pants, but has anyone <laughs> in in history even seen a bear dick? I've never. I just seen never a bear said. Cock. Oh, look at the dick on that bear, like you do with some mammals. Like what mammals? Dogs. You can see a dog's dick, horse's dick. Horse dick. Human dick. Cow. A bull, rather. <laughs> you fucking idiot. You're looking for dicks on the cow. You're going to spend a long fucking day. <laughs> I can see all these little ones. <laughs> I guess I'll just suck these tiny little dicks. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're too blunt with everything. <laughs> like we already this got cum it. tastes like milk. What the fuck? <laughs> we already got to the point we needed to be. Look, instead, you're just showing a bear scratching his back with a telephone pole. I'm desperately Don't looking. search for <laughs> bear <laughs> penis. <laughs> you're an intern. <laughs> you're an intern. Don't. Put that down. Okay. Stop it. If I was on that Stop computer, it. you'd be seeing all sorts of animal dicks, but I'm a producer. I, I'm, I work here. <laughs> yes, you built yourself up to that. Um, here's Jay. Jay, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, buddy. Now, I just want to give some advice to uh, Pep. You gotta be careful when you're bare buckle horseback riding. You don't. Okay. <laughs> He's right. You're yeah. a fucking idiot. I know. I make one mistake, and people fucking can't. You let make it go. lots of mistakes, dude. That's just this is just the latest. This is the one the last half hour. This is so bad of a mistake. <laughs> Shelby laughed at you. I, I hate that. Flash I, dance him herself <laughs> just started fucking laughing and pointing at you. Where's the wig, Flashy? So what? So I'm going back to Pittsburgh. I'm gonna do a week in the mill. Mm. It lasts fucking 15 minutes. Flashy. I'd ask Chris to go home with you, but I'm afraid he'd ask the airline for two pickets to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Taking a train, remember? <laughs> no, thanks for fucking oh. following the joke. Yeah. Good work, jerk off. I, uh, for, right, fuck I, don't play, I don't play your two <laughs> shitty fucking promotional things you did today, seeing how off track you could get from where you're supposed to be doing. It's called meandering production. He's like a dog. If someone rolls a ball, he just takes off after it. Except for the ball is his own thoughts. <laughs> he never catches them somehow. No, he can't catch them. Not that old dog. 
Not that old dog. Uh, here's uh, Brian. Brian, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Hicks, it's uh, Barry Garcia's birthday today. Why don't you play something <laughs> on the next break? And not from the best of album like you always do. Kiss my ass. You don't even like fish. I do like fish. It's true. Liar. You don't like fish at all. Love fish. You never go to their shows, and you never once pick a fucking playlist to theirs. On my, my, birth, my 30th birthday, we had an awesome fish playlist. It fucking killed. Everyone was having a great time. No, no one remembers how drunk you were that day. <laughs> I barely remember how drunk I was. Yeah. Oh, that was so funny. It's got me like two liters of whiskey for a four-hour show. I couldn't drink it all. That was the most calm, cool, and collected I think I've ever seen Fez. <laughs> Seriously. like It we, was Fez's best show. It was amazing. We came in, and we were late setting up the decorations, and I was expecting him to get all upset, and he was like, yeah, just go in when you can, when they finish. <coughs> I was like, yeah, oh my goodness. It. He was at his best. It was a good party. Who, who's, you know, so what? It was a year ago, okay? He had a good show. <laughs> Uh, George, you're on the Running Fest show. What's up, buddy? Hey, I just want to tell you, dude, we actually do have bear buckle fights out here in Texas, man. It's a, a dude versus a bell, a bear with a fucking big belt buckle, and you have to fucking hit him in the dick. <laughs> I would watch that. You can find it first. I'm starting to feel fucking embarrassed for you, Chris. I do feel, you should be feeling embarrassed, because I feel embarrassed for myself. I mangle the English language on a daily basis. I wasn't even sure you were human enough to feel embarrassed, so I'm fucking excited for you. It's a new emotion, besides anger. He's a maniac. It's just a fucking Chris Stanley story. <laughs> maniac. There's no way they put you in jail. They gotta put you in the fucking hospital for the criminally insane. I'd take that. You I'd much the- rather be in the nun hut than prison. You spent the night in jail before? Yeah. Many nights? nights? What's that? How many nights? I'm uh, not enough. Yeah, I don't, why are we gonna talk about my sordid past, Molly? Jesus sorry, Christ! Sorry, Molly thinks it's fucking funny to bring up people's problems. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's never had it on her side of the fucking tracks. Yeah. Well, look in Harrison County, where you grew up, <laughs> while you were in your fucking palatial estate, I was in the goddamn fucking palatial holding state. cell. All right. <laughs> Worried about where the fuck is my lawyer? <laughs> this is this could be really bad. <laughs> why well, you say the truth? Where the fuck is my public defender? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm here for uh, Mr. Chris Stankley. <laughs> oh, man, did you really do all these things? Should, You're in big trouble. Shouldn't you be calming me down right now? And my name's Stanley, not Stankley. Um, do you know which one of those guys is the judge? <laughs> I don't know, the one in the fucking black robes? What, should, should I just be representing myself? <laughs> Here's our buddy Andy in Cleveland. Hey, uh, uh, Chris, um, yeah. I've got blue pickets for paradise. Check your bag, we'll leave tonight. Thanks, Andy, for nothing. <laughs> You're welcome, for buddy. Paradise. You're welcome. I'm there for you. You fucking love bears, huh? No, I don't love bears. <laughs> I thought you did. I thought that was your scene. No, no, it's not my scene at all. Who am I thinking of then? Fez? Well, no, Fez likes twinks. That was our man last night. Ron. Did you see him on The Tonight Show? No, I didn't. Ron Funches? I didn't see him on The Tonight Show. Fucking hysterical. He was also in Time Out New York. <laughs> You're a big Time Out New York person. <laughs> did you, did you work today. for them? Just today. He's always bringing it up. <laughs> like, oh, you haven't heard? He was in Time Out New York. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't. It's only you know what one I'd city. Like to, I'd like to read a fucking timeout Molly right now. Just stop it oh, with all these oh, fun oh. facts. <laughs> Darn it. There's a new restaurant opening down in Block Guys. We should go. I read it in Time Out New York. <laughs> Time Out Molly would be the worst <laughs> magazine. By, by the way, it sounded like you said there's a new restaurant opening down the Black Guy. <laughs> oh, no. I block guys, <laughs> not black guys. I feel like I'm fucking falling into this buckle situation again. Can't get out of it. If you want, we can start and call you Buckles. <laughs> What's That's wrong, a- Buckles? Nothing. <laughs> you mush mouth prick. <laughs> Can't say words right. That's my problem. It's all I got the name Buckles. Duh. Everybody calls me, everybody calls me Buckles. I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> I just can't get out. I just fucking keep fucking everything up. That's me, Buckles. That would really take down the legitimacy of this. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me just uh, get you in touch with my producer, Buckles. <laughs> Buckles, he's a fuck up. Can't speak the English language. Wait, hold on. You think that that's worse than me saying when you talk to my producer, Chris Stanley? Oh, it's the same fucking thing. No. When I tell people that, they're like, you know what? Never mind. Really? I wanna, yeah. They don't want to go through the fucking aggravation. I thought I was treating people right. Yeah. One guy said, um, Chris called me. He wanted me to, he said he booked me on a moonscape. What was he talking about? I go, that's just buckles. You fucking come over anytime you want. <laughs> Don't mind him. That's just buckles. That's me, buckles. The fuck up. <laughs> oh, who's he got with him? Bucky too. That's buckles. And his young sidekick, Bucky. I can't yeah. speak either. <laughs> We've got to add that when, you know, the, the whole character starts to go south. No yeah. one cares anymore. <laughs> this summer, it's Bucky. He's just like Buckles, but smaller. I still fuck up things, but it just sort of fucking spans. Damn. Even Bucky curses for no apparent reason. <laughs> I learned it from Buckles. I think you use your... Your swears as a verbal pause. Oh shit! What the hell's that supposed to mean? So, bear yeah. pause. Bear pause. There's no, no. no. That, that wasn't an insult. No, they're well placed. <laughs> it's like when you're so stupid you can't think of words. You just start yelling out "fucking cunt." <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you do, if you like actually just took a pause instead, it would sound very normal. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't know what you're trying to say. Right? Look, every. F word is placed specifically. Really? Yeah, it's all planned out. Like a verbal dance. Here's my favorite with Shelby. Like, like I'll be Shelby, and you tell me why I was doing something wrong, and I'll, I'll, I'm playing the part of Shelby. Okay, well, see, you fuck, you, yeah, you yeah, screwed yeah. up. Yeah. No, but I didn't even yeah, explain to you how you. Right. You didn't <laughs> yes. say that down yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know yeah, how yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will. Oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. But no, see, you just yeah, 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 yeah. I got. Uh, Stop yeah, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you're just you're yes, blowing me off. Yes, yes. I you yes, you're gonna fuck yeah, it gonna, up again. Yes, yes. You're gonna screw I it up. I got it. I got it. Yes. No, you thank don't. You. You're just talking over me. <laughs> so how you do it yes. is yes. I'm gonna fucking. Kill I will. You. I'm gonna yes. Slit your fucking throat. <laughs> he just agrees so fucking fast. You can't even tell him what's going on. You're not going to get better if you don't listen. It's fucking buckles and yes, yes. <laughs> this show's doomed. I'm going to beat this buckles thing eventually. Jason, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie B, can we get a, uh, a fudge and buckles that calm going? I mean, those guys be the two dumbest fuckers around <laughs> together. I bet they'd be great. Would you be willing to do that as a sitcom? I mean, what are we getting on network or what? Yeah, yeah. it's the buckles and fuckles showtime hour. <laughs> Let's go then. <laughs> I have a problem. Yeah, the network can get you on is M N N. A story is on. Represent. What's M M N? M N N. Well, you'd have to watch fucking cable, wouldn't you? Yeah. That's your cable access channel on a story. No, I thought it was Q. You thought buckles. <laughs> Oh, Buckles, we don't pay you to think. We pay you to talk gibberish. <laughs> well, guess I'm doing a good job then, huh? If we did do a pilot, he'd have to become like a mechanic, so then he's always just dropping tools everywhere, <laughs> knocking cars off. Red. I, I should be like a chemist. He has no fucking respect for you, does he? No, he has, he has not. I don't think he has respect for anything. I'm surprised he hasn't been shot in the fucking head by just some angry person. Molly, I know that you are so good to that fucking kid. Mm -hmm. But if you heard the shitty promo that he tried to give you, he honestly, it was like before a race, right? If someone said, oh, I'm here to help you, Molly, get ready for the race. Let me slice your tendon. <laughs> This works, right? Yeah, let me get rid of this Achilles tendon so you're, you'll be nice and loose. This works for you. It was intentional? Yes, it was intentional. Really? Yeah. He's shaking his head. It was decent. <laughs> it was what? It was... It could be better. It, it, it will be better. It was disparaging, is what it was. It was disparaging. He attempted to ruin you in the audience's <laughs> eyes and ears before this thing started. 
I don't know. I Did he really? Kill him. Yeah. It was audio sabotage. Yeah. Now, and Chris had already said we're not running this before I came in, but I fucking listened to it, and I seriously, I saw Red. Because this is Molly's big thing. Next week, she's getting her own hour. Yeah, her own hour. It's going to be great. And this is an hour that you just don't run on the show, but then she can take it, send it out to ra other radio stations, and say, look, this is something I did on a national platform. This ran. So he thought to himself, oh, how can I wipe my goddamn thin ass all over this? <laughs> is it jealousy, or are you just an awful person, Shelby? Looking back, it could have sold it, punched it up better. We, it will be top-notch. Yes, I know, because I'm going to make Chris stand next to you while you do it. Chris's vacation doesn't start at 3 o'clock. <laughs> you cornholed his vacation. I feel like my fucking asshole just spread open and I'm just getting <laughs> fucking railed Dude, out. Oh, That's my why God. I don't like you backing me up. Okay. Because you're blunt and disgusting. Blame that on buckles, not me. <laughs> That's genius. Buckles is your alter ego. Finally, someone to play my fuck ups on. Me. Jason, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron and Buckles. Hey, um, Robbie, um, the hole was yesterday. It never came up. Well, what's going on with that? And that prick Shelby also cornholed that by attempting to shoot it at the last moment. And then there was scheduling problems, so it didn't get done. Yeah, there was a late call. As they call it in the industry. Yeah, but you can't shoot something, edit it, and have it ready right for the next moment. You think TV shows do that? You think the, when Friends was big, they screamed out on Wednesday, hold oh, quick, write and shoot a show. <laughs> We've got to get it on tomorrow night. Chandler, you have any ideas? Wait, I think we have to write him out of this episode. He has gastroenteritis. Do you actually think that they called him Chandler in real life? <laughs> yeah, I do. I thought they, it was you like... Know, Friends isn't a documentary, right? I thought they were using the method, you know? Like, everyone stay in character at all times. Ugh, and they wouldn't have picked those characters. <laughs> well, Buckles, we gotta take a break here. Can you catch up on sleep, Chris? You, is that even scientifically possible? I feel like it is. Like, all right, I feel like it is, too, but I think they always tell you it's not. That's bullshit. All right, let's say I sleep five hours on a Thursday to Friday. Yeah. And if I sleep 12 hours Friday going into Saturday, I've caught up on my sleep. Yeah, but the thing is that five hours of sleep is what you've fucked up because you'll never get the right kind of sleep. So just having more sleep doesn't mean you're getting the right kind of sleep. I feel like it's the right kind when I get it. I know that you say you feel that, but like everything else, you do that without any scientific data. You just do it on feelings, and you're no different to me than a fucking Baptist minister. He feels something, so he yells it out and wants everybody to believe in it. That's all I have in this buckled-up life of mine. <laughs> you don't want to drop the buckle thing, do you? You're fucking loving he it. He likes it. Yeah, I got no problem with calling you buckles. We're getting shirts made. Now, Chris and I were having a debate. Do we play the thing that Shelby tried to do to Molly? I feel, yeah, we should play it. Just so Molly knows what Shelby... But she never listens. All the awful <laughs> things that they do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just gotta let it roll off your back. That's what I always say. Then maybe I should make you use this then. No, if you no, don't no, care no. one way or another. No, no, I do. I I'll lock it in. No, I absolutely Michelle, do. Your your daughter's gonna get an awful preview. No, no, this I thing definitely should be great. No, I want the best intro that I can possibly have. I mean when Shelby says me and stuff to me, I let it roll off my back. So here's the thing, Molly. I'm trying to shape you into being the broadcaster you wanna be. Yeah. But if you're not willing to battle for it, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm let's go. If, if you're gonna be willing to end up like buckles, oh, God. where you just don't give a shit what happens. No, to you. I I do. I absolutely do. Do I mean? Yeah. I guess. Now, did you hate this thing? First, I, as soon as I heard, as soon as I heard it, I was like, Shelby, you're recutting this after the show today. This you're is what I screamed it. at Shelby. This, you've got to set the table for the audience to believe in your host and to believe in your format. That's the job. No. He's the only time that I ever see him be, make the announcer try to be about the announcer. Like, if he was the announcer for a Letterman show, they would never get back to Dave. Because he would just be sitting there, just self-indulging. Now I am kind of curious and want to hear it. Because I, my problem is, it is, I don't think Molly will take it as bad as it is. 
Oh, it's, as soon as I heard I was like, whoa, you can't use this. I was offended. Really? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't remember the last time Shelby's handed me something where I say, thank you, that's good. <laughs> you got to sit down and then talk to him as if he was an infant. He's been hanging around here for a year. Yeah. And it doesn't, think, it doesn't feel like he's picking up on the radio part of radio. You have to absorb, absorb what's around you, like an amoeba. Why like a you, radio why, why don't you just learn like a fucking human <laughs> <laughs> alright should some, I play it no you know what see the thing is I want you to know something because you're a woman I don't want you to just feel like you're here to be subservient to men I don't feel I want, that please let's see the way you are with Shelby I want you to make it on your own yeah and go for your own dreams I want to do that too. I don't think I don't think that I take any excuse my language shit from anybody. How many times has he tried to throw you under the oh, bus? Well, for I, I, you know, I flipped out of him that one time. I would say that I wasn't subservient you, at you that point. You should be flipping out on him as much as I do, which is neither one of you seem to be getting through. I'm gonna maybe I'll pull a gun on him one day. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? These levels are fucked. <laughs> Escalated so quickly. <laughs> His levels are always fucked. As a matter of fact, I heard that uh, Fez told me last night that he had the fucking text to complain about levels on the show yesterday. Pod Gurian down, bring uh, Provenza up. Yeah, I, I, he was. And he goes like this. What? He actually says to me, because he's in front of his sister. And I want him to feel good in front of his sister. That's his family. And he goes, Jesus, what happens around that place when I'm not there? He said that. Yeah. And I go like this. <laughs> I'm just eating. And I go like this. I don't know, Fez. I just don't know. I, I'm, now I'm pissed. I don't know how we do it. <laughs> what the when fuck? When you told me it's the first fun week you've had in forever. We're having a great time, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. You're not having a good time? <laughs> I've never had a good time with you people. Oh. I don't mean that in a bad way. It sounds pretty bad. You. Here's the thing. You're being subservient. I'm not. Shelby is a fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> Buckles, I haven't even understood him in years. It's like talking to a wet sponge. I don't know. It's like I see liquid squishing out of him, but I don't understand the words that the sponge is trying to make. All right, let's play this thing. Now, I want to again say this. Well, we haven't even told people what you're doing yet, right? Oh, right. But Molly took her hour, and what she wanted to do is have the idea of it would be Molly presenting young comedians, some that you know, some that you don't know, all under 30. And we're like, oh, what a great idea. It's, yeah. a, it's a chance to play some stand-up during... The Ron and Fez show. You can get stand up all day long on Raw Dog. So, this is a great thing. If you just happen to come to our show and you'll go to the rest of Raw Dog, this is a great thing for you to see. And then I said to Molly, this would be also great for you because you can take that and say, Look, I had a one hour special on a national platform. How many 20 year olds get to say that, Chris? Zero. Well, one. <laughs> Molly. It's like you're calling her a zero. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's the one. Everyone else is a zero. So, our point of this is to promote Molly as a person who's capable. If I'm driving down the road and I hear Molly, I don't want her to, I don't want to think, is this the first time she's ever done anything? I want to sit there, listen to the programming, and accept it the way I would. That's a professional person doing a professional job. That's the point of this. Listen to what Shelby did as her intro. Molly Bean is a 20-year-old student and psychology major attending Boston College and a current intern for the Ron and Fez show. She has her finger on the pulse of youth culture, and after a recent trip to Israel, she's back and harder than ever. Today, she'll be giving you the top young comedians to watch out for under the age of 30. Well, Molly, take it away. What the hell is that? I don't know what. That's why I said, as soon as I heard it, I'm like, you're recutting this. This, um... Now, why would she have, then have a piece that she would send around to broadcasting companies if she's been called an intern? Yeah. And making a joke out of her trip. Some yeah, some weird thing that referenced that inside the self represent. You're like, what is wrong with you? This is kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie. You've heard the way 
announcing works before. Yeah, uh, how an intro happens. That, yeah, what weird, we're really joke. selling is the 13 going on 30, and here's your host. That's the focus of this. Not Molly as a 20-year-old intern. <laughs> Psychology student. For some reason... These morons running <laughs> fast gave her her own hour. Guess she's getting over on those idiots, huh? Here's Shay Molly, start talking. Yeah, and yeah, at best, you're doing the same voice as Plug Report. Already, your Plug Report thing is a joke. Now you turn the Molly into one. How's well, the good feel? news is that it can be recut. <sighs> I'll be overseeing the recutting of the intro. I'll be putting my vacation on hold. <laughs> Maybe you should just announce for her. What do you and want? Throw that fucking guy to the goddamn thing. Maybe, maybe, or look, maybe Shelby could be my tool that I use <laughs> to do shape into something great. Yeah. Does that Wait, come what? off creepy? He's for shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. <laughs> I'm wondering different two direction things. than I originally imagined. Uh, different direction than anyone imagined. And then I actually said to him, "Do you realize that we're treating this thing if?" An announcer turned this in at a broadcast company. You may be fired for presenting the host that way. Yeah, it was it was a saboteur job. Yes, and you stepped on what would be an hour. And didn't mention the name of the actual the segment. No, which, it's which, like, let me say some weird things about Molly. She's young and probably shouldn't even be getting a chance to do this. How does that I don't know whether it's jealousy, misogyny, or just weird creepiness that he has. I don't know why he does the things that he does. Well, I think definitely part of it's misogyny. That's part of this mix. Weird hatred of the ladies. Yeah, I don't know. That um, was uh, it's pretty bad. Sorry, if I was driving down the road and I didn't know anything, I, and I was just, I'd be, what the hell is this garbage? I the Israel the thing is really what threw me off. I was like, no, nah, I wouldn't say I was on board, but I would say I had a pinky toe on board until Israel came up, and then I was like, I don't even get, uh, I, I was offended moment one, moment one, that you start to, you know, she's just a 20-year-old intern. I'm putting her out there as a broadcaster in this, period. There's a lot of broadcasters who start young, and if they take the attitude of this is, you know, I've got this show, the listener is going to believe them. They're not The listener, if they think that, that the show's working, doesn't go, I wonder what that person's background is. No, it's just you're on the radio. You're yes. You're speaking. You, you, yes, you're not getting in the way of it. Uh, Fritz, you're on the Run Fest show. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want to see, uh, Shelby is your worst producer ever, ever. But I want to see if he can even name some of the great producers that came before him in Ron and Fez history. You have 15 seconds, Shelby. How many producers can you name? There's Dave, Earl. One. All first names. That's all he's doing. Billy Staples. Ten seconds. And that's all I got. That's all I know. So in all this time, you're not Grateful. even interested in the history of the show that you're working on. Ronnie, can I give you my top five? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Sorry, Pepper. I got to say it, though. Number one, Al Dukes. Number two, I'm going to give it to Pepper just for the time. The seven <laughs> years or whatever. <laughs> Well, thanks for nothing, motherfucker. Just take me off the list then. Hey, hey. You, you kissed my ass. That? This is the way you Seven talk to years. listeners. Seven you years got the silver. Luck. You ought to be fucking happy. <laughs> number two. Number two. Number three, Eastside Dave. Number four, Hawk. Number five, Mr. J-Dubs. I'm out. Peace. Shelby hasn't even learned any of those names. Thanks for calling us out, Dukes. <laughs> By the way, Al did nothing. I would infuriate the listeners by going like this. Yeah, I ate a, I ate a chicken sandwich <laughs> every day for lunch. And my favorite album is Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs>